to me. I I just started it. recording for you. Seven oh six. Okie dokie. Only hey, four. Yeah, so Jen's not here, obviously. So um, I'll be heading up the chair position, and we're all here. No, we're missing. We're missing one. I'm missing uh, Laura. Laura. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Yes. Two um, is Laura and, and Jen. Yeah. Right. So anything um, that passes tonight will have to be <laughs> unanimous. Unanimous generally is. <laughs> Um, I guess in terms of comments, not much, but I do, you know, as you probably have all noticed, we are now up to um, category three drought uh, here in the Connecticut River Valley. So just um, start collecting your gray water and those little pulses of rain that come through actually do fill up the rain barrels if you have any. So that's uh, my fun facts of the day. And we got Dave here. Dave, where have you been, man? Um, I'm sure you got a couple of comments for us. I know I feel uh, I feel somewhat disconnected, so I I jumped on here early, and Aaron and I were chatting. But yeah, um, been a lot on my plate lately, and taking a little time off here and there, um, but also having some connectivity problems at home. So very strange. But I met with our IT department, and uh, every time I have needs, they they chuckle a little bit because. Uh, you know, I don't follow all the IT rules and <laughs> updates and all of that on my laptop. And but they straightened me out, and and here I am. So happy to be with you from my basement in South Amherst. So, but yeah, um, I just thought I would take you around town a little bit with some updates from the field. Erin may have a few others uh, that she's working on. But you know, um, Fletcher, you you mentioned you know kind of water levels. Um, you know, I, I do work closely with the town manager and, and our uh, DPW staff, so we are keeping a close eye, just FYI, on the reservoirs and the wells. And, and right now we are in good shape. All of our wells are, are operating and our, our reservoirs at uh, our reservoirs, plural, are at reasonable levels. But there's no question it is, uh, it is uh, it's tough out there now. It's probably going to get tougher. I was just up in Vermont over the weekend and my wife asked me, why, why are you not going out there fly fishing? And I took her over to one of my favorite rivers, the Black River, and it was a third of what it normally runs. And you, you don't want to stress out uh, those fish. But Puffer's Pond is, is doing quite well this summer. Water is low, um, a lot of beach there this year with, with the sandbar extending. It's been relatively busy, you know, certainly busy on these hot days. Uh, water quality has been tested weekly, and by and large, I think we had one blip on the screen a couple of weeks ago, but by and large, we're doing fine uh, with water quality. Um, staff uh, staff tests that on, I believe, Wednesdays, Tuesday or Wednesday, and then um, DPW runs the test right at the wastewater treatment plant down near UMass, so we get the tests back very quickly uh, once it's been um, uh, cultured, if you will. Um, Fort River is posted all summer long. Um, we do not expect that water quality to improve. There's really not a lot we can do. This is that jump, they call it jump bridge there at uh, uh, Wentworth Farm Conservation Area. So I've actually stopped testing it. Uh, there is a cost to testing, uh, $35 to $50 per test. And frankly, uh, that has not passed in a couple of years and I don't think it will. So there's a bigger story to be explored at Fort River and, and we are, uh, DPW and Fort River Watershed and various, um, you know, UMass and Amherst College is kind of helping around the edges. So we've got a bigger mystery to figure out there. What is affecting the water quality in the fort so much? And, and uh, we'll work on that. Um, let's see, the KC Trail off of Southeast Street, the commission approved a kind of a modified plan for that. You may recall, we were hoping to put in a uh, a new bridge there. You, you, we went through an NOI process with you many, many months ago to put in a new um, the uh, dual vehicular bridge as well as a, a, a pedestrian bridge, a, a trail bridge. And we really decided, uh, given the complexity of that situation along the Hop Brook, that and the cost, that we needed to come up with a temporary solution. Came back to you with a a temp bridge. Aaron may have a picture of that temp bridge, but I was just down there today. Looks pretty good. Um, I've got some tweaks for our field staff a little bit, but um, I think it'll be a great short-term solution for the next year to get people safely over the Hop Brook down to the rail trail from Southeast Street. Um, speaking of, it, let's stay in the category of bridges. Um, Amethyst Pedestrian Bridge. This is the replacement for the bridge that was washed out. We have some fun funding banked, if you will, for that project. 
Uh, Aaron and I uh, went out and met on the site with our building commissioner, Rob Mora, who's, who's uh, a builder in his, in his other life, if you will, um, and is also our building commissioner, so has to give us a building permit for that, a bridge that large. And um, so we're, oh, there's the bridge on the, the new bridge on the KC Trail uh, off of Southeast Street. Um, I think it. Came Wait, did you out. say that was going to be a temporary bridge? This one? It is. It is a temporary bridge. It can oh, never mind. Be taken apart. Yeah. <laughs> now I see. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it can be taken apart. Got and, it. <laughs> um, it's, it's really for pedestrians, for yeah. hikers. Um, but we're we're taking a second look at that amethyst brook and really reevaluating the design um, from a structural standpoint. Um, we may go a different direction and pivot from the telephone pole style bridge it would require us to come back through through the commission. So stay tuned on that. I think in the next four to six weeks, four to six weeks, we should have a kind of an updated oh. design on that. Um, moving south, Plumbrook Pond. I, I trust some of you have been out there to take a walk from Sweet Alice Conservation Area around the pond at the at the Kestrel Trust office. We have new um, we have new Town of Amherst conservation land signs up there just to make sure everybody knows what's town land, private land, and Kestrel land. Um, we, Brad and staff, also did some routine maintenance mowing of the dam, which is required and was part of our NOI many, many months ago. So we, we have to keep that dam system uh, free of um, um, woody vegetation. So um, that'll be nice to, to kind of get that back in shape. We did a little trail mowing there, and then Aaron and Rob and I are working, and I believe it'll go out to bid probably later this week or early next week. You may recall there was a couple of crushed culverts on one of the streams that comes into feeds the um, uh, Plumbrook Pond above the Kestrel office, and we're going to put that out to bid and see if we can get some bids. It is dry. It's a great time to do a project like that, so we're going to see if we can get some bids from small contractors to do that. So it'd be kind of a nice project if we can get it done because Aaron worked so hard with Kestrel and, and others to get the culvert done below the dam and free up that section and, and that, that incredible uh, uh, habitat and stream flow improvement there. If we can do the same thing uh, south of there on the inflow to the pond, one of the inflows to the pond, that would be a nice thing. And yep. that's a, but that, that's a, that culvert you're speaking of now, that's on just like a footpath, right? It is. Yeah. yeah, it's all, yeah, I've seen it. Okay, I know what so you what mean. We'll but, do so, but it is, wouldn't be obviously the scale to what they oh just did on the driveway, no. obviously. Actually, so, it's uh, what we do is we pull out the two culverts and we'd replace it with a footbridge. There will be, yeah. no, there will not be okay. a vehicular bridge there. Oh, so you would contract it's that out and not do that in-house? Say again? You would, you would contract that work out and not do that We are going to contract that out. It's, it's some delicate work there in the stream. It's, mm. you know, it's a, it's a cold water fishery there. Um, you know, I have confidence in Brad and Tyler, but um, we want to, you know, there's okay. stream bank stabilization that needs to happen there. So Aaron has worked on the scope of services with Rob Mora, as a matter of fact. So we'll get a, a small, uh, smaller uh, local firm, hopefully, to do that work. It's, it's not going to be a lot of money, um, but much, much smaller than the culvert replacement for the Kestrel yeah. uh, uh, driveway. Um, so that'll be exciting to get that going. Field mowing should start. You know, we always wait until after grassland birds have uh, fledged. We're well after that period at this time. We, you know, we try to, you know, we have over 200 acres of open field habitat. We try to, you know, try as best we can to avoid those areas that are, you know, uh, 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 you know, uh, prime pollinator habitat. But, you know, we, we do the best we can. We are going to allow places like Amethyst Brook, uh, the fields there to grow up and we'll try to mow those in November. But if we can get in with the dry summer to, to places like uh, in particular Atkins Flats has not been mowed in a number of, of years. And that used to be our best, uh, highest production for grassland birds, uh, bobolinks, meadowlarks, et cetera. And that has really gone pretty woody in the last couple of years. And there's not a lot of production there for, for grassland birds. So we'll try to get in there. We're going to try to get into Mount Pollux. We're going to try to uh, work our way around the filming. I'm not sure. I think the film crew that's going to be up there doing the movie probably wants the, the grass long is my guess. So we don't want to go in there and kind of knock it all down right before they film. I think that's on August 16th, 17th, something like that. 
And then finally, uh, Hickory Ridge, we're pushing toward, um, you know, pulling all, you know, in the fall, we'll be pulling together all the pieces for a comprehensive plan. Obviously, the commission, the planning board, the town council will want to see that that plan. I've been working uh, on the elements of that with Aaron and, and uh, Ben Brager and Nate Malloy and Stephanie Ciccarello, others in the planning department. Um, we have the wetlands uh, all done. Uh, Aaron and, and Ben have done a great job on mapping. We have a number of maps of the property, estimated habitat, priority habitat, uh, flood floodways, flood zones, et cetera. Um, we're working on, Aaron and, and Ben have also come up with kind of a pre preliminary trail design, um, utilizing some of the existing cart paths and then some other connections. And then we're working with some of the abutting landowners on easements to try to make our way, if you will, I don't, I don't have the map in front of you tonight, but making our way north to East Hadley Road and east over to West Street. Um, so we'll be bringing that to you probably in October, early November with some of the preliminary uh, pieces of that comprehensive plan. Um, cool. And we hope to at least get in there and do some very basic uh, mowing of the existing cart paths this fall, but that will probably be late in the fall after uh, wood turtles uh, hunker down for the year, so after the first frost. Um, the only other update I have, the dog park opened, and I don't think I've been with you since the dog park opened. Had a great opening over there, very well utilized. Um, I'm hoping it takes a little pressure off some of the conservation areas like Wentworth Farm, maybe Amethyst Brook, um, people seem to really enjoy it. And um, keep in mind that in concert with that pro project, we also put a conservation restriction on the entire um, uh, landfill, the South landfill, about 45 acres. So that is now in trust, if you will. Kestrel holds the, will hold the CR. I don't know if it's recorded yet, but we, you know we're on the one yard line. Um, and that'll all be grassland bird habitat up there on the main part of the South landfill. And we're poised to um, um, turn the turn the solar on at the North Landfill. So it's a really nice project. We get solar on the North Landfill, grass and bird habitat on the south, and then the dog park. And we maintain the uh, Robert Frost Trail across the old uh, landfill, as well as the sledding hill to the south. If any of you have been to the to the sledding hill on the on the far end of the uh, the uh, the old landfill. So um, so yeah, lots of things happening. It's a great time to work. It is dry, which is nice and safer for <coughs> resources and, and rivers and streams. So we're trying to get anything that's permitted done. So, so that's a quick uh, summary of, of projects around town. Any, any, any what, what's, what's going on with progress on commercial development at Hickory Ridge? Well, that'll all be part of, um, all be part of the comprehensive plan, Larry. Uh, we will, you know, we, we, the mapping we've done will show where there is, quote, developable land, um, you know, high and dry, out of estimated priority habitat, out of wetland area, resource areas, riverfront, et cetera. There's not a lot of acreage there. When you actually get down to the mapping, um, it is quite a limited, you know, people look at it and say, wow, 150 acres, there must be so much we can do there. And realistically, um, most of it is quite restricted. We actually uh, had a great meeting with a group, um, they're regional, they are um, Disc Golf, uh, the Disc Golf Association uh, of New England or something like that, because uh, we did have interest in disc golf being played there. And we had a good meeting with them, but once we laid over the layers of, of restricted land, um, they kind of took a deep gulp, a big gulp and said, wow, um, we don't know if there's enough acreage there for this golf, so um, available acreage. So uh, we put that a little bit on the, we hit the pause button, but we will look at what the reuse options are for the clubhouse area and the uh, parking lot. Obviously we want trailhead parking there. Yeah. But what, what else could go there? You may recall in the, in the lead up to buying Hickory Ridge, which was about four years, four and a half years, we did also look at other uses, municipal uses. Um, we are still looking for and planning for a South Amherst fire station. And I would honestly say that 
Hickory Ridge could be used, uh, part of that available upland could be a some sort of a, a substation or South Amherst uh, modest fire station. Um, it's not out of the question. So all of that will be covered in that comprehensive plan and the commission will be kind of front and center in those, those discussions and as that moves forward. Thanks. Uh, the other thing, any... One last yeah. thing on Hickory, I will say that I forgot. Aaron and I are working to try to bring on um, somebody to help us a little bit, um, a consultant to help us with ecological restoration. Uh, I felt as though we, we just needed a little shot in the arm, a little more help on that. Um, so I believe we have a follow-up conversation. It might be on Friday, um, Aaron and myself, uh, with a firm that we are considering bringing on to help us with that aspect of the plan. We're really strong on mapping. We're really mm. strong on trails. Um, we're strong on the planning side with regard to upland redevelopment, zoning, all of that. But um, we're, I think we just needed a little boost on the, on the ecological restoration. What, are, what, are, what should our goals be? And obviously the Conservation Commission will be part of that piece as well. Yeah, that's a great one. I could jump in on that, but I won't. Cause there's, yeah, I was gonna bring up like, you know, it'd be great cause all the mowing you do is like maintain with fire, you know but it's, that's such a huge resource intensive yeah. project as well. But there is funding available these days for fire yeah. planning at least. So at least setting up a plan to work with prescribed fire in a way to, for restoration purposes. So grassland yeah. restoration, perfect, like perfect. Yeah. So there used to is, do that on conservation lists. Some of the conservation in, lists. In, in my early years with the town, we did yeah. do uh, prescribed burns down at Atkins Flats. Was, yeah. was, okay. We did some pretty extensive ones down there, Brad, and we brought in DCR and they were very yep. helpful and that could all be on the table. Yeah. So there's, there's, you know, once you guys start looking at that, there's, there are some funding availability action, or currently, so those, all those things dry up too sometimes, but there's, there's opportunity now mm -hmm. trying to build on specifically that type of restoration stuff. Sure. So that's Any cool. Any other questions on those those updates? All right, we're gonna keep on moving then. Um, I do wanna uh, just mention for the public that we are continuing. So if you're here for Canton Ave or the railroad, those two are continued to our September, sorry, Aaron, 10th, 14th? Uh, September uh, 14th, the railroad will be 735 and Canton will be, I'm sorry, the railroad would be 735, Canton Ave will be 745. Yeah, thanks. So again, anyone in the public here for Canton Ave or the railroad, that's going to be um, continued. Um, so can we, we want to move on uh, uh, to the land use policy draft? Um, I got to look at it. Thanks for Michelle um, throwing, uh, getting into it. I put some comments in there, strictly comments, didn't really get into like grammatical stuff or anything like that, just kind of general comments. So we would, um, this is really easy because I was going to ask who would be the next person to look at it. And the next person would be Andre because you have no choice because you're the only one here. Because <laughs> uh, Larry's leaving. This is Larry's last uh, last show. So, hey. <laughs> As the logical next one, I'll certainly accept. Okay. Look forward to uh, tackling that. Excellent. Um, great. So Aaron, obviously you don't mind sending that off to, um, Andre for the next, is it, are we, do we want to just keep it going and have this, this next co the conversation again, um, same thing, same format on the next meeting? Yeah. I mean, I think give everybody you have a, a long chance time to just, now. yeah, just give everybody a chance to read through it. And, you know, it, it's not going to take us very long for everybody to get through at this point. Cause we're, you know, our membership is, is, uh, we're down a couple members. So, um, so yeah, that'd be great. I'll forward your comments. I just flipped through them. I'll forward those on to Andre and Andre, if you want to do markups and then when you're done, then, then we'll send them on to Jen for, for her to look at. Definitely. Sounds great. Thanks, man. Um, and then the next one is the land use for Amherst college. I, I'm assuming, um, somebody from Amherst college is not going to partake. They, they are because, not. Yeah, because the reason is that they have a, they've already requested this. This is a three year permit. So it's just administratively, you were saying, Aaron, that you just requested them to do this online. 
Yeah, because we just started with the OpenGov permit software process. Oh. Um, and the oh. previous time that they submitted, we didn't have OpenGov set up yet. So this way we'll have the permit in our OpenGov system and it'll be documented that they're going to be doing the regular stream um, qual water quality monitoring for the next three years on various conservation areas in town. And they do give us the results of their water quality testing. And I do post those on our website. Um, so if anybody's interested in what those results are, um, th that and any of our other sort of side projects that we are working on, if you go to the main Conservation Commission page, um, the left column all the way at the bottom, there's other wetlands projects and there there's a couple different projects listed with the uh, um, sort of results of different things that are going on in town related to oh, wetlands. That's great. Thanks for putting that together. It is inf it's just extremely inf um, great information to get, um, especially it's nice to partner up with other people in town to help with that stuff. So there's nothing else um that we need to do administratively there's no motion or anything correct it's um i think if we could make a motion just approving the land use application it's sort of just a formality for us to okay. now have their application in our open gov system that would be great all right folks let's get a motion going i move to approve the amherst college land use application for water quality monitoring second Larry seconded. All right, voice vote, Michelle. Aye. Andre. Aye. Larry. Aye. And I for Fletcher. Excellent. Um, do you want quick. do you want to jump to a really quick other business item to get it off our plate so we're not dealing with it at the end? Yeah, that'd be great. Okay. Um so we received a request for certificate of compliance for 30 Kestrel Lane. Um, and I was out there today or yesterday rather and took a look at it. The site is fully stable. It was constructed like 20 years ago. Uh, it's sort of more just like a um, administrative thing. They never um, issued the certificate of compliance on it. So um, I would be comfortable releasing the certificate of compliance for the property. Excellent. I move we, I move we issue a certificate of requirement for 30 Kestrel Lane. Second. Excellent. Uh, voice vote, Larry. Aye. Andre. Aye. Michelle. Michelle. Aye. There we go. And I for Fletcher. Wonderful. And that emergency cert for the hazard trees, that's getting tabled. The emergency cert is getting tabled. We're just waiting for a start date um, for the work. Um, the other item that was on the agenda was a minor modification for the mill lane. There's a project on mill lane. They're having a, a change to a footbridge. Um, but I talked with Jen about that mm -hmm. and we're going to table that discussion as well to the September 14th meeting. Um, there was two other correspondence items. One was um, hey, the, for the Hickory Ridge solar project, they're going to be working to start the interconnection process. And you'll recall that the commission did approve um, them to move the point of interconnection at West Pomeroy from the west side of the access road to the east side of the uh, access road. So in the coming days and weeks, uh, the trees that are on the east side um, will be removed so that they can start installing the poles um, for the interconnection there. So just to give the, the board a heads up that that was that change was approved and that was just sort of part and parcel to the change. Um, the other thing was that we've been asked because um, Leroy was our CPA appointment to um, find a new um, CPA liaison and Fletcher and I spoke earlier today and Dave we sort of thought it might be more appropriate to wait until we have two new members so that we can have a full complement of the board to appoint someone but I don't know if that's okay to wait until September to do with the CPA, I remember they got started really early. The last year they started really early, but generally it's 
December? Yeah, they do. They did. They did move it up quite a bit since Fletcher was on that um, as part of the CPAC. Um, I think proposals are now due September 1 or thereabouts. Um, or maybe it's the end of September. It might be the end of September. Um, I, I think we have a little time. I believe the town manager is considering some uh, residents who have put in their their uh, forms to be to join the commission. So the process is typically the town manager works with me, more specifically with Aaron, and they interview people uh, after somebody has filled out a, a CAF form online. And um, so that process is underway. But yeah, um, I think it's okay to wait, you know, two to four weeks on that. Um, it was going to be Laura, correct? And then Laura joined the um, the solar uh, bylaw uh, group. Um, did anybody else who's here tonight, Larry is moving off. Did anybody else have an interest in that? Is, that right, is everybody that? jumping for to get on or should we, you want to just wait? I'm not sure what it is. Oh, Community Preservation Act Committee is, um, is a group, a wonderful, wonderful committee. They meet to make decisions, recommendations, I should say, to the town council on projects uh, that fall under the Community Preservation Act. So that is essentially a tax on real estate um, and the projects fall in four categories, conservation or open space, recreation, historic preservation and affordable housing. So it's a really interesting group we typically, the town of Amherst typically has between, oh, there's a range between 900,000 and maybe 1.3, 1.4 million dollars to allocate every year. We don't have to allocate all of that every year in those categories. So it's to protect historic resources, historic buildings. We've put money toward the town hall, the Jones Library, Oh, the JCA steeple that was was uh, needed uh, needed um, uh, corrective work, uh, uh, fields, uh, facilities, um, you know, uh, things like that. Track and field project at the high school is kind of a, a hot item on that list. But it's also open acquisition. space, open space applications, trails, etc. Yeah. So That's think about it. Maybe at our yeah. next meeting we have a more full discussion of that. Or Michelle, were you going to chime in? I was just wondering when they meet. Um, they meet. They meet rather intensely as they review the proposals. Uh, so they would probably start meeting in late September, and then they like to. They typically meet on a Thursday, if I'm not mistaken, like a Thursday oh. evening, six thirty ish, and they they try to get their recommendations done by middle of February, uh, because the recommendations are in anticipation of the next budget year. So they're, so they will meet in, let's say, October, November, December, January, February, they'll make their recommendations to the town council based on the available budgets and the, um, the projects that are uh, uh, eligible. And then that recommendation goes to the town council in the spring for FY24. So the 24 budget starts July 1, 2023. So just to give you an idea. It but it's not be, intensive like, you know, four times a month. It's no, just, no, no, no. It's, it's not that. It's one time a month. Yeah, yeah um, it's not a. And there could be, you know, in recent years, there's been, you know, 15 to 20 proposals. Um, so there's a robust response. You know, everything from, a you know, a Conservation Commission puts in, Conservation Department puts in a $25,000 request for trails and bridges to, you know, an $800,000 request for uh, uh, a, a new track and, and field uh, facility at the high school, you know, and everything in between. So think about it, um, you know, if anybody wants to call me, you know, I'd be happy to have a conversation with them offline and not take the whole commission's time and I can tell you more about it. Also, go to their website and take a look at some of the proposals that have been supported by the <clears throat> people. It's pretty, it's pretty impressive. It can be kind of fun, you know, allocating that money to worthy projects in our community too. So. 
no pressure. Okay. Uh, are we ready to, um, I think time to move on. Any other, um, Michelle, Andre, any other questions? You good? Cool. I'm all set. Excellent. Um, so we're going to move on. I've got my cheat sheet here. Um, before we get started, thanks, Aaron. Um, we, this is just, we like to go over these types of things, but there's our general procedure for fairness and all the applicants. So each hearing, we try to keep it within 20 minutes. We try. Um, but we always request that the applicant gives us just a quick, your name, quick representation of the explanation of what the project is. We usually have comments from the Conservation Commission or the staff, this would be Aaron, uh, from site visits, photos, whatever. And then we do allow for public comment and we do ask for public comment for each person just to only speak for two minutes, please. Um, and that has to do with the jurisdiction of, of the Conservation Commission. Um, so our jurisdiction, we're here to um, uphold the Wetlands Protection Act and the Amherst Wetlands, Protect, Wetlands Bylaw. So we just ask that that is, per, pertains to our jurisdiction. And then we'll have a couple minutes for the Conservation Commission to kind of deliberate and we'll go from there. Um, thanks, Aaron, for that. So we are here to, and I will start the, um, for the request for determination of Fort River Watershed Association. So I'm gonna start uh, procedure for wetlands hearings. Um, this meeting is held, this meeting, this meeting is being held as requ required by the provisions of chapter 131, section 40 of the general laws of the Commonwealth an act relative to the protection of wetlands as most recently amended in article 3.31 wetlands protection under the Amherst town of Amherst by general bylaws. And so do we have the applicant here? Yes, I believe Bruce, I saw Bruce Stedman um, in here and so I will promote him to a panelist. So Great, that thanks. He can give us the presentation. Let's see here. Yep, got it. Hey, Bruce. We, yep, I'm there we go. Yep. yep. Excellent. Hey, thanks for coming, Bruce. So, can you just give My us pleasure. a you know who you are and just a little explanation of the uh, of the project? Sure. I'm Bruce Stedman. I'm one of the three co-directors of the Conway School of Landscape Design. Um, I'm also part of an ad hoc uh, advisory group. Um, for the Fort River Watershed Association, and we're uh, we're fiscally sponsored by the Connecticut River Conservancy. <clears throat> Last spring, we put in a proposal to the Mass Environmental Trust for about eight thousand dollars to essentially rehabilitate the Emily Dickinson Trail, which is on the south bank of the Fort River, from goes from Groth Park to the um, the Norwatuck rail trail uh, terminus. There's a little parking area there. Um, if you have walked that stretch anytime recently, you'll know that there was a long time ago, a bunch of numbered posts that were part of a trail. Um, interpretive trail system. Yeah, an interpretive trail system, thank you. And so our proposal was to the MET was to get a sufficient amount of money to establish two kiosks at either end and between seven and nine different way stations with different topics uh, along the way. And you can, I believe we're seeing a picture of that uh, on the screen. Um, some significant things that we think will come from this are uh, obviously improved signage, for visitors who walk along, an enhanced understanding of the Fort Rivers ecology by the users, um, more in community engagement with the Fort River itself and its ecology, uh, some an increased awareness and engagement of the Fort River by local environmental justice communities, of which there are several along uh, who have access to it. Um, obviously, some there's some, some environmental issues that need to be addressed, um, climate being among them and some collaborations between the Fort River Watershed Association, the town of Amherst and Amherst College, which actually is technically the, uh, the owner of most of the land on which this trail exists. Um, and then there'll be some other additional pieces over, the, over time. So the basic idea is to have a series of way stops. Each one would have a Q code 
someone could go along and use their phone to go to a website that would have much more detailed information. We're also intending to have a laminated set of placards that would have the same kind of information if people didn't weren't comfortable using their phone or didn't want to look at their phone while they're walking along. Uh, Aaron and I and Brian Yellen, who's the nominally the chair of this uh, group, walked along and you can see a picture. Aaron has kindly put up a picture of a very tentative, but at least considered idea of the locations and the order of the topics. And so we're still within the group. Oh, there, there's Brian noting an old one, one of the old mm -hmm. uh, standards that was still there. So you can see a piece here. Aaron has kindly put up some uh, pictures of what we observed while we were walking along. And the idea is to refine that and then put in these markers, these way stations that are relevant to the position along the trail that a a walker would would encounter. It'll probably take one more uh, discussion and walking along to make sure that it's it's uh, um, the right thing. On the other hand, we can also change them over time. If the if the Q code is usable to have someone go to a website, there we go. There's the the tentative um, order of things and locations along the trail. It might have changed a little bit. We did some adjustments, oh, okay. but this was initial little, to give you an idea. Conceptually, this is the, the <laughs> second draft, if you will, of the order and the topics. Um, we're also going to have on the website that people go to, there'll be some information about Emily Dickinson herself. It happens that there's also two, um, I guess we'll call them renegade <laughs> uh, things out there. There's a poetry stop that somebody put up probably Amherst College allowed it to happen. Um, oh. And then there's another one that's been there for a number of other years. It's called the, the, the fairy house or the fairy bedroom or something. It's these little individual <laughs> little dolls that are inside a little box that someone- like a little dollhouse. The dollhouse, right. <laughs> so, you know, it has a sort of dynamic system, but it's, it's, we think it'll be a dramatically improved uh, circumstance. The town has also done some work to, and will continue to do some work to enhance the actual walkability of the trail. Right. They've done some nice things to improve the bridges. Dave could describe, and Dave does come to our Fort River meetings as does Aaron on occasion. So they're part of the thinking and the, the discussion about how this should be done. Yeah, I would just add, if I could, Fletcher, um, yeah, Bruce gave a great description of the project. Obviously, we would remove the existing. We don't want um, confusion. The old post there, Bruce, you know, accurately referred to there was a, a, a um, system there many, many years ago. Uh, all of those posts, there's some remaining, they would all be removed. Um, I noticed, and Aaron forwarded to me, Bruce, on your walk, there there were some blowdowns, you know, with the drought. Yeah. Uh, whether you get too much rain or too little rain, um, trees, you know, uh, suffer. So yeah. there were some recent blowdowns there. So we will remove those. We've done some bridge work. Um, at least one, the poetry box that is there did come through the commission and oh, did go to Amherst College. Didn't know that. I am not familiar with the small box with dolls or I, I actually haven't <laughs> seen that. I don't recall that coming through the commission, but the other folks who did install that did follow proper procedure and went through an earlier commission okay. a couple of years ago and also Amherst College. So I, I think it's a great project, minimal impact in the riverfront, you know, a little hand digging to put in four by four posts with these QR codes and minimal digging for essentially four four support posts for the, the, the kiosk. Each kiosk has two, what are they, six by sixes, Bruce, or four yeah. by four? Probably six by sixes. And uh, you know those would be backfilled and very simple, all hand dug stuff. So very minimal impact in the in the in the in the uh, riverfront. So this wouldn't this wouldn't trigger natural because you know this is riverfront. So this wouldn't trigger anything from natural heritage. Aaron, um, can you say more about that? 
Yeah, so we did inquire with Natural Heritage about it, and they mm -hmm. said if we stay within the existing trail envelope that mm -hmm. uh, or layout that it wouldn't require a filing, and that is definitely our intention is to stay within the existing trail envelope. Okay. Um, the legal ad was posted, the town took care of the abutter notifications, We, you saw the site visit photos. Um, Natural Heritage wasn't concerned if we were staying within the existing trail um, layout and from my perspective, the trail is, or the, the proposed work is, um, is so simple that I don't, I don't have any concerns about what's proposed. Um, and then who's going to maintain the trail? Well, because I know you just offered to, for help on it, but it's Amherst College land. Yeah, so, so Amherst College did, as Bruce might have mentioned, Amherst College did approve of the concept of the grant concept of the uh, educational mission of the of the project. Amherst town of Amherst has been maintaining that trail for yeah. twenty gotcha. plus years. <laughs> Amherst College, my predecessor Pete Westover, essentially I think worked with Amherst College way back when, 25, 30 years ago, and and put in the trail. But long term maintenance would still fall to the town, so we would have to you know work with. With the watershed group with the fort river watershed group to you know make sure things don't get damaged the kiosks are updated the qr codes lead to something active you know there's nothing worse than going to a, a website that's so dated or old that you know it's not worth your time so you know i think there's enough interest in this that the the volunteers will you know be looking at that to make sure you know the posts don't end up in the Fort River. Sometimes that happens. There's vandal vandalism and, you know, uh, we'll replace a post here and there and, and the, the town could just pick up the cost of that. I was just going to mention that the Connecticut River Conservancy, which clearly is a long standing and will be long standing into the future, is the manager of the website. The, the Fort River, is, they are our fiscal sponsor and we're still a little relatively ad hoc, but they're going to manage the website to make sure that it's there for the long term. Sounds good. Michelle, you had a question? I was just going to mention, I think this is great. I love that trail. It's got a lot of good diversity and it's got good connectivity with interesting things. I was just going to mention that I was there about a month ago and it was pretty overgrown and impassable with poison ivy and other things. And I, I had to like do a full wash down. I couldn't get through the whole thing. So I guess my only comment is if they were gonna entice people down this trail with very cool kiosks and other things, just maybe um, keep it on a regular schedule. I don't know, maybe, I don't know what, what's to do about the poison ivy. Like it looks like Aaron, you made it down there fine recently, but um, it was, it was, pretty impassable one month ago in July. So that's a really good point, Michelle. I believe um, the trail volunteers have done some, some modest uh, brushback since you were there. I will say, honestly, there's no easy solution for poison ivy. We generally don't ask volunteers or even staff to kind of go full on into, into poison ivy, although we've had some some volunteers who just don't get it and they're they're up for it, uh, but that's really on them because I don't want to jeopardize their health. But in terms of brush back, it has been it has been cut back, you know, just modest uh, annual you know trimming. Uh, and then, as Bruce mentioned, uh, town staff did get in and replace some of the boards. There needs to be a little more bridge work, modest, yeah. you know, uh, uh, bridge uh, 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 wood replacement, nothing uh, drastic. Um, but yeah, yeah that, that is a good point. It's, it can be kind of a, uh, it can be a, a little overgrown and, and, and people get worried about two things, ticks and poison ivy. So there, you know, I don't have an easy solution for poison ivy be, and we've looked at that through the years, um, because we really try to avoid, uh, uh herbicides. Um, so it's a tough one. Yeah, I mean, I guess if we're going to have all these great kiosks just to make it maybe like, I don't know, it, it grows fast because it's open and it's wet. So maybe like, a I don't know, keep tabs on how open the trail is for the public so they can enjoy all of the effort that yeah. goes into this. Yeah, that's We all. are going to work with Bruce and his team on making sure kind of the branding, although this grant is working with the Watershed Association and, and with uh, other partners, 
we do want to make sure that the branding is consistent with other other new kiosks we're, we're developing. So we'll work with Bruce and his team on that. And it does make sense. We do have some standard um, graphics for poison ivy uh, and uh, ticks. So it makes sense to put that on the kiosk on either end, just you know, for those people visiting or not aware, you know, you do need to be careful of those overhanging, uh, you know, multi-floor rows. That's that's where the ticks are, you know, and that's when you, you take them home with you. So mm -hmm. um, I guess we kind of jumped ahead a little bit, but any, anyone else from the commission have any questions, comments? Um, anybody from the public um, if interested in commenting or questions about this project? No, I'll say no. Um, all right, um, Commissioner, I think for, you know, this seems pretty straightforward. Uh, looks like we got a lot of support. Um, so if somebody wants to make a motion, looks like Aaron's got one chalked up for us there. So, um, I move to issue a positive determination under the wetlands bylaw checking box three and a negative determination under the wetlands protection act checking box two. Second that. Nice. Thank you. Uh, voice vote, Michelle. Aye. Andre. Aye. Larry. Larry. Aye. Nice. And I for Fletcher. Uh, Bruce, hey, um, thanks. Keep up the good effort. Thank you for um, your support. We'll you got it. have some kind of an event where we'll invite you to come as the grand opening of the trail when it's ready to go in mid mid fall, we'll say. Mid fall. Let's hope the uh, spray park's still going to Croft Park, though. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> yeah, that's bad. All right, we'll stop. All right. Thank you so much. See ya. Hi, Bruce. Bye bye. I uh, just want to make another. Um, comment uh, just in case folks are here for the Canton Ave and or the railroad they have that is continued to uh, September 14th so just letting you know we were will not be discussing those the Canton Ave project or the uh, New England Railroad but with that said we will move on um, all right excellent now we're all set here so this one is a um, Oh, still going. I'll let you add some uh, in there. Oh, okay. Uh, another request for termination. So it's gonna open this year, open the hearing. This meeting is being held as required by the provisions of chapter 131, section 40 of the general laws of the Commonwealth and act relative to the protection of wetlands as most recently amended and article 3.31, wetlands protection under the town of Amherst general bylaws. Um, we have somebody here from the uh, Eversource representing today. You can raise your hand. Virginia, I believe. And I'll Virginia. I might have promoted the wrong person. <laughs> <laughs> it's, she the raised her hand right that. as I was promoting her. Oh, there she goes. Okay. <laughs> Excellent. Hey, there. Ah, hey, there. There. Hello. there you are. Hey there, Virginia. Hi. Hey, um, if you just give me, uh, you know, obviously your name and then just give us a quick uh, overview of, um, for the request for termination. Sure. Um, my name is Virginia Martell. I am here on behalf of Eversource through BSC Group. Um, and we've submitted this RDA request for determination to add one new mid span pole into the right of way that's located adjacent to 169 Meadow Street. It is within the 200 foot riverfront area to the Mill River up on that end, um, 100 foot buffer zone to BVW, and then within bordering lands subject to flooding. Excellent. Um, thank you. Aaron, do you want to give us a little bit more lowdown? Did you, were you, you were there today? Yes, and I'm just, just trying to queue up the plan. Bear with me just a moment, and then I'll share the site visit photos. So, um, All right. oops. So the background of the project is that Eversource is looking to increase load capacity throughout the Amherst, uh, South Deerfield, Waitfield, Waitley, and Hatfield areas. Um, they have a lot of new 
businesses that have requested mm -hmm. to be put onto the grid within the next couple of years. And in order to do that safely, they have to increase the capacity load so that like the thermal limits aren't reached and we don't have brownouts and stuff. So in order to do this, um, they would like to replace this section of underground. It's actually direct buried conduit that starts at pole 80 21 down here. So I'm pointing at my screen like you guys can see that. Um, <laughs> it's the yellow line that is going to be uh, direct buried that is replaced with underground conduit. So it's a like for like replacement um, with increased capacity. And then at 311-32M, that underground conduit is going to rise up onto a new mid-span pole and then continue down the row line overhead. Oh, okay, yeah. So they think um, what they would like to do is to access this area. Normally, new poles are easily exempt if they're within 10 feet of the road shoulder. Um, but because this one is further back off of the road shoulder, they actually have to access either through the adjacent parcel of land. So they'll go over ground with ground conditions as is, or they will travel up to pole 311-30 and travel within the road down to the pole. Either way, they don't expect a lot of disturbance from driving over the grass and anything that would be disturbed that they would smooth and stabilize and mulch so that it revegetated. Yep. So these are the very last poles on that line that are just going to be mm. replacements, a like for like replacement. So they're going to take one out and put one right back in. Um, each one is four square feet of disturbed area in the end, but because it's a replacement and they're filling in the old hole, they aren't adding any additional disturbance to it. And then these pole, this where I'm standing there, the white marker is where that new pole is mm. going to be located off of Meadow Street. And all of this is just within the, um, the field area. So it is not anticipated that any of the trees that are border the Mill River there will need to come down. And we're about 50 to 75 feet away from the riverbank at that point. It's very thick in there. It's really good pollinator habitat. Mm. <laughs> oh, it's beautiful. You get down that river. Oh, I know guys that bait fish down there. It's a, I, I walk in there sometimes. It's yeah. pretty cool. It's hard to get into though. Yeah. Um, Fletcher, could I ask a quick question? Is it possible yep. to go back to the first page of the plan? I just had a question for Virginia. Mm -hmm. What I was curious about was coming off of Meadow Street, I'm having a little trouble seeing the property line between Rise, that's the Rise uh, Marijuana Establishment. And so, yeah, I'm just curious. Yeah. The whose property, so, so is that line underground? At that so, point? Um, yes, this section that is between 80 um, slash 20 dash one, there is a section that's already underground there, but mm -hmm. there is also overhead. So there's both along this entire section. Okay. Um, but like three, I, I just want to, I guess I'm trying to get a sense because. Um, the land that rises on obviously is private, but the property line actually, that is town of Amherst conservation land beyond like 311 uh, slash 32, right in there. Right. Yeah, so, all of that, everything to the east is all conservation land. So I'm just curious, are any of the poles or any of the underground under conservation land or is it all in the private land? 
So Aaron and I talked about this earlier because I've consulted with Eversource on this. Based on the Amherst GIS mapping, um, it appears that that one pole is in the corner of the conservation land and the rest of everything else is still located on uh, the rise side or the um, agricultural parcel side. However, Eversource is legal and their um, deeded information for right away shows all of their poles being not on conservation area. So they have ordered a survey to be done to make sure that nothing, that the new pole that's going in isn't actually on conservation area. And maybe there's just um, a discrepancy bef between the Amherst GIS and the Eversource GIS. So they are looking at that and figuring that part of it out. So mm -hmm. just make sure that, because it was brought up that that looks like it's on conservation area. And then the deeded information from the town um, site that you can look up doesn't include anything about electrical being in the conservation area. So they're, they're working through those, but they're having a, an official survey done to make sure. Okay, no, that's, that's great. And Aaron and I didn't have a chance to discuss that um, before this evening, but yeah, that would be my only concern. Um, we bought that land, I'm gonna say 10 years ago, um, and I, I just want to make sure, yeah, I didn't remember in that acquisition that there was any deeded right of way or easement over uh, the family name was Schwaz. And it's about seven, eight acres there along the um, Mill River. And so, yeah, I would just, you know, the, the town GIS has a degree of error, you know, that could be anywhere from five to, you know, in some places it could be 15 to 25 feet. So, I just want to make sure, and I'm really glad you said a survey, I would just want to make sure that uh, Aaron and or I review that survey and any deed, deed information before any polls are put in, because I think it would be a, a big, we could not allow a poll to be put in on conservation land unless there was an existing easement. Right. right. Yeah, Makes I understand sense. that. And I think that's why they've ordered to have a survey done for it. Right. Um, so, and when we I were out there, Aaron could see that where the new poll is going is directly in line with all the existing polls. Now, whether mm -hmm. those existing polls were allowed on conservation land before it was deeded over to the town or not, not entirely sure. But I think the survey is a great is a great thing and a great idea. And, and a you know, we would really require that, I think, to make sure we don't make a, you know, an error in 2022. Um, and it would also show whether the existing poles, which go out to the north on APR land are truly on the APR farmland, the preserved farmland uh, or conservation land. And I have a feeling they are all on the, the APR, but it'd be great to confirm that, so. Okay. Yeah, I, I think it's a GIS error going out there and looking at it, you can see that the, the boundary of the right of way is like grown up and it looks like that just follows the natural property bound, but yeah. we'll, we'll it's definitely like confirm that. a very direct cut yeah. in the vegetation between, yeah. you know, the forested riverfront area and then whatever is being managed as, if it's being managed as anything by rise, but like just the area that, again, it looks like good pollinator habitat, whether they're doing that on purpose or not, but. Yeah. And we have honestly had a couple of misunderstandings there with the farmers who have farmed that about where is the property line. So I think a survey is an excellent idea. And, and again, we just want to make sure we all don't make a mistake like putting a telephone pole on conservation land, which we, we can't do without, unless Eversource has an easement that allows them to do that. Uh, that is not something that we would do. So okay. yeah, great. So, so Aaron and or I can review that survey when it comes in and any deed uh, references, that'd be great. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Should we go to public comment first and then we'll hear from the commissioners? We'll, we'll do that next. Um, does anybody in the public um, have a question or concern about the, our jurisdiction with this project? If you do, raise your hand and we'll get you on here. I would say no. Um, anybody on the, any members 
have any concerns, questions regarding uh, this project? That we can issue the positive determination, but whether or not the poll actually happens is contingent upon the survey results. Is that the process? It seems like the location of the poll would depend on the survey results. Like if if it's shown inaccurately on the plan, then it might be adjusted to be in a different location that's slightly off of the, does that seem reasonable, Virginia? Like if, if for example, your survey comes back that you're like one foot on conservation land, you might just shift it over a foot or something. I would have to, um, I would have to check just because the other two poles that are right there, they have a minimum distance for safety that they have to be uh, apart from each other. And that might be the minimum. And that's why it's so it's spaced the way it is. Usually they're pretty good about being able to um, negotiate and, and navigate issues like that, but I don't wanna positively say yes or no on that. Oh. So that survey we're talking about would be surveying both the rise property and the conservation area. Uh, I think it would just be the property line, Fletcher. They're not going to yeah, survey. Right. You, you know, we just need to know where that line is that separates the rise property from the conservation land. And so and only the section where rise and the conservation land touch. I'm saying is, is so it only be like whatever 500 or 1,000 foot section. Yeah, it's not very far. So there. we're not saying like trying to get trying to yeah. see if we can get a survey well, yeah. all the way up <laughs> out of this one yeah um, but it, again i don't know i would look to aaron to to kind of help us through the navigate the you know the the next steps in this but yeah i just want to reiterate we you know we can't we can't allow eversource right. to put a telephone pole on conservation land so there has to be another solution that gets that pole onto, if it, if it is found by, by survey to be on conservation land, just move it five feet or whatever number of feet onto the rise property. And, and the other thing the survey will say, and, and I'm a little surprised on this deed reference too, is I presume there's a, an easement over the rise property that is so many feet wide that the telephone pole or underground uh, uh, cables must be in. So that's what the survey will will tell us. Right, exactly. It, it should tell exactly where the Eversource easement is on it. And and it should all be on the Rise property, but mm -hmm. we haven't yeah. seen it, so. Yeah, okay. So are we then, I guess, well, I mean, commissioners, if you have any other um, thoughts on this? Or, so are we, uh, come? yeah, go ahead, Andre. Yeah. Um, um, that this is within the um, within the area of jurisdiction. Uh, is that is that correct? I mean, it's pretty. It's right close next to the um, next to the river there. Um, I'm just curious uh, about the impact of vehicles or equipment needed to. Um, to drill that for that pole and install the uh, the new pole. Um, so the, the there should be minimal impact. Like I mentioned, they're going to use uh, ground conditions, and it's not um, a very soft uh, soil there. So they're either going to get permission from the rise property to drive over the lawn area that's there, or if they have to, they would come in from that top pole that they're replacing and stay within the easement and drive down to that area. Um, any disturbed vegetation would be stabilized and then either and reseeded so that it vegetates back. And the actual impact for the pole itself would only, they would auger in a six foot hole take the spoils out and then drop in the pole and then use those same spoils to fill it back in. So the total impact is about four square feet for the pole, which in the case of riverfront area is pretty um, minimal, de, de minimis, I think is the term. Okay. 
Oke. Okay. Other commissioners. So I guess my question then is, um, if we do, um, I'm sorry, I'm reading uh, your conditions here, Aaron. So are we will will be comfortable enough to issue this yes. permit with this type of condition? Obviously, you know, because things could change if the survey does say something else. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm pretty certain that it's an it's a simple GIS error that's showing that it's it's likely. I mean, it the the pole is proposed right in between two other poles, so right. it it doesn't make sense that there would be poles on conservation land. It's it's got to be just running right along the edge of the conservation land, and it's just an error with the, um, yeah. you know, some of the the polygon has a little has a little error in it. Uh, don't they all? Mm -hmm. um, there is the possibility right. that it could be an er error with the survey and there was either a, um i mean it, it was an acquired from it was an acquired conservation easement from or lands from a private uh property owner so errors can happen i just don't want to assume that it's going to be fine i guess so like just as long as we can issue this and it, it'll you know there's some solution if the, it's found that the poll is actually on the conservation land. Well, the poll, the poll that the poll is pro being proposed, and what we're saying in the condition is that the poll is going on the Eversource right of way, and we're going to determine that by survey. So there's no poll is going on conservation land. We're just going to get confirmation by survey that the poll must go in the Eversource right of way because that's the only place they can legally put it. Um, so as long as we confirm and ensure that the poll is going in the right of way, I think we'll be in good shape because there is no right of way that goes over the conservation area. Right, and if the survey shows something else for some reason, then I think that's a whole nother can of worms because there's like eight poles out right. there right now. So right. <laughs> there's something like that, but maybe not that many, but yeah. Okay, um, I think we seem if we can get a motion from somebody, that'll be, uh, we can, we'll just kind of get this pro project going. I move we issue a positive determination under wetlands bylaw checking box three and a negative determination under wetlands protection act checking box two, given the conditions one that Eversource will share survey results of poll location to ensure the poll is on the Eversource right away, and two, disturbance will be seated and stabilized upon completion. Second. Michelle with a second. Thanks, everyone. Voice vote, Larry. Aye. Michelle. Aye. And Andre. Aye. And I for me. <clears throat> um, sounds good. Thanks, Virginia. Sound, um, you'll be in contact with. Aaron about those survey results and um absolutely Patrick, can I ask one quick question of Virginia before she runs and that is oh. you mentioned you mentioned the need for you know upgrading the polls etc there was a, a proposal by one of the farmers out there for a small solar installation is that are you aware is that moving forward or or is there still interest in that <laughs> Um, I would have to look into it. I don't recall off of the top of my head if that is part of this reason. I know that there's four or five large projects and two of them include marijuana cultivation facilities that are going in that are, that are going to really increase the load, like they're going to need the load for it and without it without these upgrades, they're not gonna be able to put them on the network, on the, the grid. So I feel like I saw a solar installation project on that list, but I can't recall off the top of my head, whether it's this one or a different one. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you, Virginia. Thank you so much, guys. Have a good night. You too. Gotta boost those loads. Everybody needs a new phone. <laughs> new phone. Air conditioning. Air exactly. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. Yep. You want to eat, cool the yep. world. That's right.
one gas pipeline at a time. Anyway, we are going to move on to another request for determination. So I'm going to um, go ahead and read away here. Um, so this meeting is being held and required by the provisions of Chapter 131, Section 40 of the General Laws of the Commonwealth and Act relative to the protection of wetlands, as most recently amended in Article 3.31, Wetlands Protection of the Town of Amherst General Bylaws. So we have a request for determination. GZA um, is on behalf of Dana Carnegie, Carnegie and um, Stephen Tow Towton. Am I, am I butchering that name? Um, looks like Andrea is here. Yes, hi, I'm Adrian Dunk from GZA. I'm here on behalf of the homeowners. I'm at 15 Atwater Circle. Um, so this is an existing single family home um, at Water Circle is south of Pomeroy Lane near Route 116. Um, and so what they are proposing is they will be removing an existing deck and building a garage, um, expanding their driveway and putting in a newly configured deck um, to connect their house and their existing pool. The work is located in the outer riverfront area um, and it will not exceed 10% total riverfront area development on their property. Um, so that, that's the project, it's pretty limited. Um, a portion of the work is outside of jurisdiction, but most of it is within the riverfront area. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Oh, God, you asked something else. Oh, no, I was just going to say, Erin Aaron and I had a site visit on Tuesday, um, so I don't know if she can share those photos. You'll see the um, complete work area is with an existing lawn. Excellent. Yes, so here's the plan um, with the riverfront area marked. And I'll pull up the photos so you guys can see. Ah, why does it do this to me? Why? Oh, that stinks. Ugh. But just download it. Just download it. No, it does. It's not that That's, simple, yeah, unfortunately. Okay. It doesn't. Um, it it doesn't just download and open. It's like you got to go to a different uh, location to find it. Um, bear with me just one second. I'm going to see if I can open it from another location. go. This is standing out in the woods, looking out toward the riverfront area. There's a little brush pile there. This is looking out towards the river. So you can't even, from the tree line, you can't even see the river. Um, it's pretty deep inside the tree line. This is the see lawn. See how humid it is. I, my, <laughs> my camera was completely <laughs> fogged. I had to keep cleaning it because it was totally covered in condensation, the lens yeah. and the, yeah, it was really it's bad. Been tough. You can just see how humid it was. Um, and so, from what I understand, the driveway would come in between the where the sort of where those Adirondack chairs are located, um, and then the stakes. Uh, so, and the deck is going between the existing pool and the house, and then the stakes show the extent of the garage area in the lawn. And I also ran some calcs myself on the plan set. And I'll share those, um, but no surprise to what Adrian said. Um, the lot is approximately one acre. The riverfront area, approximately 32,670 square feet. The total alteration proposed between the garage and the driveway is approximately 1,970 square feet. The deck is considered a minor activity, so that wasn't included, but the um, total percentage of alteration on the lot um, or in the riverfront area on the lot is 6%. So it's it's under the 10% or 5,000 square foot area allowance for the um, for the parcel. So it doesn't exceed any 
regulatory threshold in terms of it being allowed. And it's also, as Adrian noted, it's on the outer extent of the 200 foot riverfront area. I think this one barely made it and, and it was a surprise to the homeowners because it was literally like 178 feet from the river. Um, and that triggered them to have to file a permit, which they've been very cooperative in, in doing and trying to um, get this approved before the work moves forward, so. Well, that's, we appreciate them coming forward with us. Yeah. Um, all right, thanks, Aaron. Um, I'm just gonna open up to see if anybody in the public is interested in commenting or questioning about this project. So if anybody in the public is interested, raise your hand and we will put you on the pedestal. Solid. Aaron. Uh, okay, no one from the public. And uh, any commi commissioners? <laughs> Did you guys see me sneezing? Or was... I said salute. Yeah, I was like, yeah. I tried to mute myself so you couldn't see. No, you did. You did. Uh, but we we're all watching. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, any uh, questions uh, from the commissioners about this project? Mm -hmm. Hopping out. I do have a question on um, those stakes. So I, I, it's probably obvious. It's just the stakes that you showed for the garage, everything to the other side of it with that wood line is where the river is on the other side of that wood line, I assume. Yes, so the yes. river is in the wood line. Yeah, okay. I was just confirming that lawn distance. Area. Yeah, it's a pretty significant. So their property line follows the boundary of the lawn. And when you stand at the boundary of the lawn looking into the woods, you can't even see the river from the edge of the woods. It's it's pretty far back. I want to say it's probably like 100 feet into that tree line. Cool. It's interesting you call it a river. I would call it a stream anyway. It's almost in my backyard. <laughs> Well, it's on a USGS topographic map, so we have. I know to it is. I know it is. I, I'm very yeah. familiar with the area. <laughs> What's next? You guys gonna pull out stream stats? All right. Oh, uh, yeah. Boy. Oh <laughs> boy, here it goes. <laughs> um, uh, Andre. <laughs> um, all right. So, if there's no other concerns or questions, we'll um, let's get a motion that's drafted here and keep it going. I move we issue a positive determination under the wet laws bylaw checking box three and a negative determination under wet lungs protection act checking box two with conditions for one installation of erosion controls as shown in the plans and two erosion control inspection prior to start of work and three erosion control inspection upon completion and final stabilization. Second. Excellent. Um, voice vote, Larry? Aye. Andre? Aye. Michelle? Aye. And aye for Fletcher. Um, and um, um, all right, I think that's pretty straightforward. I think where we all, and we, as, as said in the conditions, we are interested in seeing, getting the um, seeing the erosion drills uh, put in place before start of construction. That's a, that's a big one for us, but I'm sure that's, that's not a problem. problem. Yeah, excellent. All right, well, thank you very much. Great, thank you. Okay, folks, we're gonna move right along here. Um, so the New England Central Railroad request for termination has been continued to September 14th, 735. That's correct, uh, Aaron? Yep. Excellent. And then Canton Ave has also been, oh, do we have to make a motion? Though? I'm sorry, yes. we have to make a motion yep. to uh, continue. Uh, can we get a motion to continue with the uh, New England Central I Railroad? Moved, I move to continue public hearing to September 14, 2022 at 7.35 p.m. Second. Thank you. Uh, voice vote, Larry. Aye. Michelle. Aye. Andre. Aye. And aye for Fletcher. Thank you. And the notice of intent for Canton Ave on lot two will also be continued. And so we're gonna need a uh, motion for that for the 14th. I move to continue the public hearing for Canton Ave lot two to September 14th, 2022 at 7.45 p.m. Second. Thank you, voice vote, Michelle. Aye. Andre. Aye. Larry. Aye. And I for Fletcher. Excellent.
Thank you, everyone. All right, moving on to the notice of intent for West Street. So we're going to open this one up. I've got another thing here. So oh, we've already opened this one. We've already There's opened a continuation. It. Yep. Look at you know, and I was getting all prepared for this and <laughs> notes. <laughs> got my notes. Um, excellent. Um, I'm assuming um, is this for Mickey Marcus is going to be here with us today. Yes. And there we go. Okay. Hey. Hi, everybody. Here we are. Look at you out in the ocean there. Well, I'm supposed to be on vacation on Cape Cod this week, but instead, I'd much rather be with all of you. I, <laughs> we know that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, hey, um, so uh, we continued the hearing. Uh, the commission asked for a little additional information. With your permission, can I share a screen? Sure. Okay. So, um, commission asked for a couple additional items, uh, a snow storage area. And I don't know if you can see my cursor, but we've indicated that on the, on the plan here. It's an area that currently it has, um, it's pavement, it has a dumpster. It's gonna be regrassed and seeded as an open space uh, lawn. That's our proposed snow storage area. Um, the commission asked for um, additional information on the proposed boardwalk that we're gonna propose, a little path connection here. And um, we do have a, um, um, let's see, I'm not sure if you can see this screen. Does that, did that come up yep. as a boardwalk detail? So we added a different, uh, an additional sheet uh, showing a, a very simple boardwalk walking path. It's it's a very uh, small span, but it'll have helical piers um, going through an area that'll be restored well. And uh, the commission, um, I'll stop the screen share. The uh, heritage uh, asked for a turtle protection plan before work can begin. And the initial drafts of that are calling for um, a silt fence rather than straw wattles. So we've changed the erosion control um, to silt fence around the whole property. It's a little over an acre of site work. Uh, Aaron also asked for um, additional uh, impact calculation. She's actually been asking for this for several weeks. And I think our CAD person finally got her what she was looking for, I hope. Um, a little bit like pulling teeth, and I apologize, but. Um, I think we have all that information to Aaron at this point. Let's see here. And then, okay, so that is that the overview there, Mickey? It, it is, yeah. The commission just asked for some additional pieces of information and right. that had been sent into the commission. So the plans just got updated to include the additional information that, that was requested. Okay, thanks. And we didn't, so we received that for Aaron. Do you want to um, go over some of that before we get move on? We understand that the plans didn't come into this afternoon. The plans were sent on Monday. Um, and then I think Aaron had additional information for the calculations that came in today, Aaron. And a, a hard copy also got dropped off as well. Yeah, so that the pro so there when the plans were sent, I was looking for the calculation to include so that we would be able to issue the permit because there's certain numbers as far as the restoration numbers within they have to be broken out by inner riparian and outer riparian in the permit. Um, and the plan set was like 22 gigabytes. So when I was trying to view it, it, you know, it was just very unwieldy and it kept freezing and I, you know, switching pages. So I asked for a hard copy because it was difficult to read and I was unable to confirm that the numbers were on there. And then, so this was Monday when they were sent to me. And then later this week or Tuesday, whatever, I was able to confirm the numbers weren't there. So they, um, 
today, finally, I said, I really need these numbers because we can't issue the permit without them. And then I was able to get an answer with the numbers for the resource um, resource area restoration within 100 feet and 200 feet. Um, I was hoping to provide additional um, detail to the commission as far as the percentage of alterations um, in terms of the inner and outer riparian. Um, but I can what I can show you is so this is this was the information that had been requested. Um, oops, can you guys you guys can't see my screen right now, can you? No. no. Okay, sorry. Um, so based on the numbers that I was given today, so um, sorry, I just want to highlight this so that you guys can see the actual regulation. Um, so the issuing authority may allow alteration of up to 5,000 square feet or 10% of the riverfront area. And um, then the highlighted portion below proposed work which does not meet the requirement may be allowed only if the applicant demonstrates by preponderance of the evidence from a competent source that the area of an undisturbed vegetation within the overall average width of the 100 feet will provide equivalent protection of the resource area or that the partial rebuttal of the presumption uh, presumption of significance is sufficient to justify the lesser area of undisturbed vegetation so that's that is the section that we basically be looking at here because 18% is the alteration. Now mm -hmm. I haven't been able to get numbers as far as the total total riverfront area of inner and outer or the existing degraded area because I was just trying to give you guys a comparison of what's existing and what's proposed. But um, so those numbers weren't provided, but I was able to basically um, in order to just give you a general idea, 18% of alteration of the riverfront area on this lot is proposed um, with the 18,188 square feet, that would be about 9% of the riverfront area that would be restored on the site. So if you take into consideration the overall proposed alteration and then the restoration area, <sighs> it brings it down to, you know, like 9% alteration. Um, so that was basically the the alteration numbers in terms of compliance with uh, the alteration under riverfront but i haven't been able to look through all of the sheets in detail um they just got delivered to my desk this this afternoon so um it's really at the commission's discretion um or the applicant's discretion how you guys want to proceed in terms of tonight um if you want to continue to September 14th and issue at that meeting, I could be prepared to have the order of conditions drafted with, you know, a full set of conditions at that point. Um, I wouldn't really be prepared tonight to issue the full order of conditions just because I haven't had a chance to review the full set of plans. The other option would be to close the public hearing tonight. The only problem with that is that our second meeting in August was canceled for commissioner vacations. So, <clears throat> that would require the applicant to provide us with an extension to the 21 day um, issuance requirement if the public hearing was closed this evening. So those are kind of the, the options before us tonight. And, um, oh, well, I should probably go to uh, pu public comment then before we further deliberate here amongst us commissions. Um, so let's just do that first. Um, so if there's anybody in the public interested that has a question or comment about this project within our jurisdiction, um, please raise your hand when you do. Um, state your name and where you live and um, you can ask away. Two minutes would be preferred. Okie dokie, time has passed. So um, Aaron, I just wanna reiterate where we're at here. Um, so we finally got the, the uh, presumably got the numbers that we've asked for today. Obviously clearly haven't had a chance to um, review them. So you just laid out some a couple options there to 
well, before we actually, I'm sorry, I'm going to back up and see if there's anybody from um, commissioners. Do you have any other concerns or questions? What um, Aaron has brought up or anything else into this project? I, I'll just make a comment that it doesn't seem like uh, we have all the information that uh, we would need to, to, or that I would want uh, in order to make a, uh, a decision just yet. I agree with Andre, just because this is a exception um, contingent on mitigation context that I don't want more information to make at least, you know, have a sound um, agreed upon order of conditions list. So just backing up Andre on that one. Okay, it looks like, um, I think Mickey, it looks, well, looks like we're um, a few options if we just continue this. Aaron, you said that you would feel confident by September 14th that so let's say hypothetically if we do decide to continue this can we on the 14th like you know issue this permit and you know feel confident enough that we're gonna you know obviously you're gonna re review the, the documents again but feel right. confident enough that we can if we if we decide to continue to the 14th that when this comes back up that we can actually you know, we've deliberated what we wanted right rest of the commissioners we've got everything all you know, most of the most of almost everything ready that then by the 14th, maybe we could just make this, make this a quick one. You know, let me make a comment. I won't be here for that. So do you have enough people that have got background on it? So Jen would have only missed one of the hearings. Yeah. So she could do um, under right. the Mullen rule, she could review wow. the proceeding yeah. and she could vote on the project. I believe Laura has also been here for this proceeding. So if Laura um, was in attendance at the next meeting, I believe she could also vote. So if, if I could say, so um, I'll, uh, that, that's acceptable, uh, what, what you're all saying. Um, there has been a, a lot of back and forth on numbers. Uh, just, I'll just remind the commission and I'll pull out the old emails that I sent to the commission uh, at the early part of a filing. But when the surveyors went out there, we had them survey the existing building, the existing sheds, the driveway. Um, so there's um, part of the project that's developed riverfront area. And so with the new project, um, it, we were under that 10% threshold. So the, the numbers are there and they're old emails and I, I just need to pull them together for Aaron so they're all in one place. Oh, there was one other thing and this is just, um, there's multiple ways we could handle it, but um, we had discussed a sequence of construction sequence of as far as the, um, um, restoration plan and how it's kind of being folded into the overall development in terms of timeline. So Mickey, if you wanted to, I don't know if that was included in the materials, the plan sets that you sent to us with revisions and, or if you wanted to still send us something, um, we would just need to receive it prior to the, that meeting on the 14th. So like by the 9th of September, we'd need to receive that. And, or if you don't provide it, I can just put in conditions to basically make sure that there's monitoring reports or like annual reporting um, during the course of the project that would basically report to the commission what had been done over the course of the calendar year as far as implementation of the um, mitigation plan. But again, you know, I just want to make sure that I'm giving you the option to give us that or have the um, monitoring reports during construction. Yeah, and I think that'd be fine. Um, the uh, the existing driveway to the site is going to be in effect decommissioned because it's going to become rain gardens and mitigation area. So um, I'll probably access the site initially, but then it'll quickly be decommissioned. So um, the mitigation will follow um, the, con the construction sequence. So uh, I think having uh, conditions with monitoring reports, letting the commission know what, what's going on would be helpful. 
Okay, that's fine. We can just roll it right into the order. I would, I would say that I'd also be interested in some detail about the mitigation um, schedule, just so if there is a, you know, three year annual reporting that there are um, tangible benchmarks that we could be comparing the report to, um, you know, some objectives for year one, two, three. We have that kind of included. Um, you know how we usually sometimes boilerplate, like, you know, we have to have a certain amount of um, um, life expectancy for the uh, plantings. Is that, does that answer that? So, so let me just suggest as far as the conditions were concerned, my conditions were going to be during the course of construction. So let's say we have a pre-construction meeting. Once those pre-construction meetings begin, the, I would um, put in the conditions that we get quarterly reports on the progress of the restoration report from the time of that pre-construction meeting until construction is completed. And then um, my other um, recommended condition to address that would be that following the completion of the construction of the restoration area and or the beginning of treatment uh, for the invasives, that there would be annual reports that would be required um, for three years following the construction. So um, there would be like year one, year two, and then a final report on the restoration area, because typically we would require 50% success over a three-year period for a restoration to make sure plantings are successful um, and that sort of thing. So it just, those would be my conditions to sort of get at what Michelle's um, suggesting and that would give us an opportunity to review the progress and if like at the end of the three years construction was wrapping up and things were being stabilized but the mitigation hadn't begun it would kind of give us a heads up that you know and also it would be a condition of the certificate of compliance that we get those three monitoring the three annual reports and then the final report after completion of the mitigation. Uh, just to say, uh, Michelle, so there's no wetland alteration for this project. Um, what, what we're doing is pulling up an existing driveway that crosses a wetland and just restoring the hydrology. So um, it's mitigation as part of an overall package, but there's, it's not um, mitigation for any wetland that's being filled. We're just restoring previously altered wetlands and hydrology. Yeah, so I guess where I'm concerned is that um, we're issuing the permit on the basis of this mitigation happening. Otherwise, we're exceeding the threshold for that 10%, is it? So the mitigation offsets that total allowable um, percentage based on our regulation. So I, that's why I'm concerned that the mitigation happens and happens as planned and stays on schedule. Okay, I think we're, so let's, um, commissioners, we're good. Any other concerns, questions? I say, we'll let's make a motion to continue this to the 14th, but with the idea that we're gonna, you know, so if you got anything else you wanna say, say it right now. <laughs> I'll put together a solid order of conditions after I review the plans to try to sort of cover all the bases and, and really, make sure that where we have benchmarks built into the order of conditions as far as reporting is concerned so that we can make sure that they're happening happening sort of in a synchronized manner with construction hopefully the restoration is um, and I would suggest a 750 time block on September 14th we get a motion I'll move to uh continue the hearing on 395 West Street uh, to September 14th, 2022 at 7.50 p.m. Second. <laughs> Thanks, Larry. Uh, voice vote, Andre. Aye. Larry. Aye. Michelle. Oh, one more time. Doesn't say I, you're mute. Yeah, it doesn't say you're muted. Uh, I for Fletcher. Um, all right. Uh, 
Thanks, Mickey. Um, we're looking forward to seeing that driveway out of there and a little boardwalk put in. Um, Thank you all. Appreciate your time tonight. See ya. Good night. Good luck with the Cape. <laughs> okay. And um, we pretty much did all the other business. Are we doing a, are we doing the SORAD? Second just, session? I just want to make sure we have a, a time. Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. <laughs> Um, I just want to make sure we have a, uh, an executive session scheduled for the September 14th meeting, just in case we need to um, mm -hmm. have any discussion. Okay, so can we get a motion for that, folks? I move I'm to schedule an executive session pursuant to GLC 30A section 21A3 to discuss strategy with respect to litigation at 52 Bering Street regarding recently issued DEP SORAD to be on the 9-14-22 agenda. Second. Voice vote, Michelle. Aye. Larry. Aye. Andre. Aye. Aye for Fletcher. I have to say, I'm going to very much miss Larry's decisive motion making. Yes. That's something I've always appreciated. <laughs> you can carry on the so moved, though. That's yeah, right. Useful. Yes. 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 That's, you, know, that's... I, I, you guys weren't using so moved until I got here. And the point yeah. I was arguing was if it's all recorded, you've got a verbal transcript of what the motion is. So so moved works. Really brilliant. It really does. <laughs> Works well. well. And then, of course, Aaron took it to another level and just wrote it out for us. So we still, now we have to read it, you know. <laughs> Before I was like, well, oh, you know, me. Um, all their businesses were good on all their business. Okay. Yes. Excellent. Great. Yep, we're all set. And so, um, and, um, I, I know, Dave, you brought it up about uh, new appointments. So that's kind of in the motion. Um, so we might be seeing somebody, a couple folks in September, maybe. Yeah, I know it's in motion. I'll have to, I'll have to, that process is underway. I'll have to get an update from the town manager. Um, okay. I don't know, Aaron, do you have any interviews coming up yet? Have they been scheduled or not? No interviews, but I've been actively recruiting. <laughs> Me too, man. People are like, no, no, oh my God. <laughs> yeah, if you all know anybody, please encourage them. We need, we need um, yeah. residents to volunteer for committees across the board. It's a great way to get involved. And, I know. you know, you all know, I mean, this is, you know, it's hard work. It's it's a lot of work, but it's also fun. You, you know, you're working on projects that are happening in town, protecting natural resources, talking about land use and trails and open space, et cetera, et cetera. So the coolest committee love, in town. Come on. That's right. I just yeah. love the gossip. Yeah. You're bad. So that's true. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I what I what I said to myself when I when I agreed to do this or you know to be considered was I've lived in this town for 50 years. I should give something back to the town, right? Totally. Yep. And that's a good yeah. argument to make to people. And what better gift to give than clean water, right? <laughs> that's right. That's right. Yeah, Larry, we're going to miss you, man. Thanks. We are going to miss you, Larry. Much, Larry. Enjoy uh, all those other pursuits with learning oh, and retirement. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I'm well, serious. I when... When we get going on Hickory Ridge a little bit more, you know, we'll be knocking on your door. <laughs> <laughs> right. You know, I was yeah. thinking the other day that 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 I've had in the last two or three years, I've had four th issues of things, prop problems, properties right around me, you know, in terms of things that I was very surprised about, you know, that with, almost within throwing distance of a rock including one tonight. Right. I mean, that, that one tonight we dealt with, I knew the original owners of that house. <laughs> there's just so much anyway. going on, man. It's just, yeah, yeah, there's so much happening. And it has to be good civically involved, you know. That's right. This, this That's smaller right. Smaller volunteer yeah. level. It's important. I want to thank everybody for me tonight. I was pretty nervous tonight, but um, thanks for Aaron for prepping job. me. And I got a good crew, yeah. and it's really nice. The voice vote is only a couple of great. us. That was easy. Um, so, <laughs> yeah. Um, hey. yeah. So, Larry. appreciate, appreciate good it. Good luck, everybody.
Thanks, Larry. Good luck, Larry. Oh, you got, we got to make a motion to adjourn. Definitely given back. Yeah. I yeah, move, we Larry's adjourn. Back. I move, we adjourn. <laughs> Eight fifty, and I thought we were going till ten o'clock tonight. Nice. Yeah. Need a second. Yep. Second. Nice. <laughs> Voice vote, Larry. Last one. Aye. Yes. Michelle. Aye. Andre. Aye. And I for Fletcher. All right, everybody.